me packed up, ready to go back to Gravesham because I'm working with another primary school in Kent, working with years three, four, and five. It is three hours and 38 minutes. Let's go. I think that we might end up hitting London during rush hour because we have to go through London. So fingers crossed for that, but I also need to get a car wash because the state that this car is in is just not professional enough to arrive at school. I have just arrived and although this doesn't look too together because it was literally a four hour drive, although absolutely smash it, decided, you know what, four hours, let's just have some fun, let's just feel really good and the universe rewarded me because I realised that I had no tolls on which is a reminder I need to pay for it so I turned that off and it ended up being so much quicker although I did uh, miss two exits so it added on another 20 minutes but I still got here about half an hour earlier than I would have done if I hadn't put tolls on so I am um, I'm very happy to be here but the place is incredible I honestly thought it was going to be really quite small the pictures showed it as like yeah pretty small um i was like you know what that's fine just a little pad for me for the next three days but when i walked in it was like wow so i thought i'd show you So keep your expectations low. Slightly odd, I know, but I decided to bring my neon pot with me, which is my little diffuser that I got for Christmas, because I thought the last Airbnbs have not been the nicest, and I'm gonna be here for, well, I won't actually be here, but I'm gonna be here for three nights. And so I thought, I just wanna make it a little oasis of positivity and happiness. And this diffuser and the smell it gives off definitely brings me happiness. So I'm gonna go set it up. The diffuser is all set and giving out it is a delicious scent. But next up is to wash this very overdue hair. Do you just hate it when your hair feels greasy and it just makes you feel like your life isn't together? <laughs> So I'm gonna go and wash this as quick as I can and then have a little snuggle up on the sofa, pour myself a glass of red wine and get prepping for tomorrow, which is very exciting, but lots to do. So I'll see you after my shower. So I am snuggled up with some avocado on toast and some red wine prepping for tomorrow. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with this camera. And as well as prepping for tomorrow, what I wanted to do was outline the priorities that I have in being here. Obviously the number one priority is doing my absolute best for the next three days. So for context, the reason why I'm down in Gravesham is because I am doing three days at primary school, teaching them positive psychology and how to be an outstandingly happy school. And it was only a couple of months ago when I was down here last working for another school. So if you haven't watched that vlog yet, you can watch that here. And it basically runs through exactly what every single day was on, but I'm not gonna repeat that this time because you'll have already heard it. Obviously I want the next few days to go as well as possible and I'm gonna do everything in my power to make that happen getting an early night, making sure I am 100% prepped and 100% happy with my content, making sure I get to the school an hour before the first session starts so that I can make sure everything's set up, checking my bag five times to make sure I have everything that I need and a bunch of other things. So outside of my work with the primary school, I'm not really gonna have that much time. And the time that I do have, I'm quite literally gonna be exhausted. I'm gonna be getting to the school around eight o'clock and finishing about four o'clock. And I will have done four and a half hours of workshops and they are full on. And with primary school kids, you've really gotta be switched on every second. So four and a half hours of intense work 
So by the time I get home, my face is gonna be tired from smiling. My brain power is gonna be decreased. So I need to decide now before I go in what my priorities are, what I'm gonna be spending that six hours between the time I get home and the time I go to bed doing. Obviously, number one, it is gonna be prepping for the next day. Number two, it's gonna literally be editing this video because I made a promise that every single Sunday I am going to have a YouTube video come out. And if I don't start now, I'm gonna be overwhelmed by the amount of footage at the end of the week. So I'm gonna start uploading it to Premiere Pro and start editing it straight away. With that done, my third priority is gonna be filming TikTok videos. I have not been filming as many as I usually would. In fact, for the last year, I haven't been filming that much. And honestly, I think it comes down to living with somebody else. Living with somebody else means that you've always got an excuse as to why you can't do them. And since moving house, it makes that even more challenging because we have less space than we did before. So having created this beautiful oasis of calm and positivity, I think it's going to be a really beautiful space to crack out a load of content and get a lot of it edited. So those are the top three priorities. Now, whilst those are going to be consuming my actual time, they're not really going to be consuming my headspace throughout the rest of my time. So the priority that I'm going to have that's going to be in the back of my mind is actually the next book I'm going to write. So the publishing company that reached out to me and asked if I was interested in writing a book I went through the process of submitting a proposal and some sample text that I'd actually written two years ago for a book about how to overcome the fear of embarrassment and it's such a powerful book and I'm really proud of it but they got back to me saying that they didn't think it was the right fit and so if you watched my previous video when I went up to Glasgow and down to Durham and that was literally yesterday we got back but you'll have seen that video a week ago Hold on, I'm gonna put a light on because this quality is not doing it for me. I think that's a bit better. So in that last video, I explained that they got back to me and said that the book wasn't the right fit. And because I'd been quite unwell for literally the whole week, in bed, shivering, unable to get out of bed, lightheaded, just, it was horrible. And if you've had it, I feel your pain. And so when I got that news, I was feeling quite emotionally weak. and. There's nothing wrong with that. I also had a bunch of family stuff going on and when my family are in distress, it really affects me. And so I knew that I was feeling emotionally weak and that was the first thing. Jordan was next to me and I said, just so you know, I might start crying. Not because I'm actually really sad about not getting the book deal, even though it was really important to me. I'm just feeling a little bit sensitive. And so I did cry. I allowed myself to cry about not getting the book deal, about my family dist being in distress. But I wasn't telling myself negative things about it. I just knew that my body needed to express the emotion in some way, and so I let it. It had had intense expectation and pressure in relation to the book deal because I'd submitted the proposal and sample about a month and a half prior. And whilst I had not let it consume my mind, it had still been in the background, something so big that could literally change the trajectory of my career and my success was of course gonna naturally be consuming the back of my mind. And obviously again with family, when you know that your family aren't in a great place, it is just a constant feeling. I don't know if it's something in relation to like a literal connection to those that mean a lot to you. Like I weirdly, and I'm not into really spiritual woo woo stuff, but I can tell if my mum isn't feeling great. There's just a part of me that just knows and is so affected by it. And I really struggle actually to be a, the best version of me and a really high vibe version of me when my family aren't doing well. And it's something I'm working on. But yeah, the combination of those two things, I was in a bit of a emotionally vulnerable place. But once I got home, I had a good sleep, I emailed Bloomsbury back saying, no problem at all. Can you tell me like what was the issue with the books? Just a little bit of feedback. And they responded and said that the, the sample text I'd sent over, they thought the book was brilliant, but just wasn't the right fit for their audience and potentially would be best aimed at a younger audience. So like early twenties, late teens. And whilst I don't fully agree with that, I can see why the sample implies that. So the book was intended for ages 25 to 45. 
but I can totally see why it probably and also my choice of chapter to send them as the sample was probably not the most mature it was literally a story about how I'd embarrass myself during university so classically that's probably not going to be your most mature moments of the book but I breathed through it and reminded myself that the reason why I hadn't heard for a whole month and a half was because the senior editor loved it and she didn't come back to me to make changes. She liked it enough to send it to the rest of the team and to have a sit down chat with them about whether they could see potential in the book and the rest of the team concluded that it wasn't right for their list for this year. And that's okay. The point is to look at the positive, not look at the fact that it wasn't right, to look at the fact that she went ahead and showed it to the team. If she didn't think it was any good, she wouldn't have showed it to the team. So reminded myself of that. And also reminded myself that, well, they approached me. It's not like I said, I've got a great book, here you are. They approached me asking if I wanted to write a book. And I do. And maybe the book that I send them isn't right for them. And that's okay. I'm going to publish it anyway. But with a publisher that likes that style of writing. And it is unique. And that was the point. The way to engage people is to have a unique voice. But that doesn't mean that I still can't work with one of the biggest publishers in the world and in case you're wondering it's the publishing company that published harry potter what more can i say and harry potter jk rowling was rejected i think it was something like 19 times 12 times 19 times it was a lot and finally bloomsbury said yes so if she can be rejected that many times and they say yes then i'm gonna take the risk so i responded basically saying thank you so much for the feedback for telling me like what it was and yeah it's probably on me that the sample i sent you was not really the most mature so i i take that on myself but if it's okay with you in the next few weeks or month um i'll send you another sample and proposal and um, we can see if that goes down any better is any more appropriate for the list and if not then no harm done rather than being beaten down and convincing myself that i'm not good enough i decided to take action and take my future in my own hands by finding out what they didn't like and by saying do you know what i'm happy to take the time to write something else to propose something else to you and i'm really quite excited because I now know what it is they're looking for and I can go through and read and research all of the books that they've published so far and whilst not completely get rid of the Izzy Miller style, adapt my writing to suit what they're looking for and that's not going to be getting rid of Izzy Miller and becoming someone that you guys don't recognise. In fact, it's going to be a more serious piece of work that is going to put me on the map and um, that's the point and even if they don't like what I send them next they came to me and I'm not telling you this to be like oh I got approached by a big ass publisher it's to remind you that you have opportunities coming in all the time and it can seem really exciting when they come in but they won't always go the way you expect them but by using this you can make it go the way that you want you've just got to be willing to adapt to edit your expectations and to actually work hard. So I just wanted to share that with you because if you watched the last video, you would have thought that this book deal was never gonna happen and then it was over and that was the end of the road. But actually, sometimes it's just the beginning of the road. And if they're saying they're happy to read over something else, then I'm bloody well gonna send them something else. So think about something that you've maybe given up in the past or are thinking about giving up right now and reconsider whether it really is the end of the road and consider whether there's any other options or even if there's any good things that have come out of it not going the way that you wanted it to because life doesn't go the way we want it to and knowing that and accepting that and choosing and deciding and being determined to see the positives despite that is one of the best things that you can do for yourself and for your life so Rant over, I'm gonna get back to getting ready for tomorrow. Good morning. The bed is 
so comfy, so comfy to the point that I had to, <laughs> I had to look underneath the mattress and inside like the pillowcases to try and find out what brand it was because I was like, I need, I need to get on this mattress game. Unfortunately, it's an Ikea mattress that's no longer sold, but all is not lost. I'm sure that there is an equivalent. The downside is that the bedroom is right next to a road and there were multiple people having parties on a Monday night. So I ended up waking up at half 11 and then half three. Just feels like people were walking drunk down the road shouting, but nevertheless, I could have slept a lot worse. So I'm going to appreciate the sleep that I did have, drink this coffee to get some more power in me, do a morning gratitude list and some journaling with my journal and continue to prep for today. <laughs> sessions down got year fours left so we've had year three and year five and um, I'm not gonna lie to you they are quite a lively bunch so lively in fact that when I walked into the lunch hall you can see me behind when I walked into the lunch hall they the staff were playing calming relaxing music to try and calm the kids down they were that bubbly so it's been a little challenging because then you have to sort of raise your hand wait for them to be quiet like have a little horn trying to get them to stop talking so they can hear me and whilst it's an amazing dance studio that I'm in for the delivery it's also quite echoey so as soon as someone talks everybody talks so it just means that as soon as someone's talking they can't hear me at all so I've had a chat with the team and we're going to take out some of the fun slides and the fun bits and bobs that basically put them on the positive wavelength, give them a little bit of a taster before the session's even started and remove some of the, yeah, the fun little gimmicks that try to make the session interactive and exciting and engaging and put on my teacher head a little bit because you sometimes have to do that when you're working with primary school kids. Final session done and it worked like an absolute charm, changing up, like just not playing fun music as they came in, not playing fun slides and memes, just having silence and then getting started when they're in the hall and silent already. It just was brilliant. And they had just as much fun, if not more than the other groups because they were paying attention and able to listen. So I'm feeling very, very good after that session. And like, I, it was like you had, I had them in the palm of my hands, which is a really, really empowering feeling. Um, I'm hoping that I can bring it back with the other groups tomorrow by leaving out some of that fun stuff that might mislead them and take them down a bit, a bit of a wacky, crazy route. All ready for day two, baby. I have just had lunch with the year fours and I'm back in the room preparing for the final session. Year fours were a dream just like yesterday and year fives were better, not up to year four standard, but they were better. And then I've got year threes, so we shall see how they get on. What a day. We are back. <laughs> four and a half hours of working with kids under the age of 10 and I am positively knackered, positively knackered. To be fair though, I did wake up feeling exhausted and I had a boxing session the day I left, which was two days ago, and the pain or the soreness, the muscular fatigue always kicks in about two days later. So from the moment I got up this morning, I've been like walking like a penguin around the flat. I managed to summon the energy 
for the three sessions and they went really well. I continue to take the more teachery approach and I mean the year fours were the best group by far still but the other groups were brilliant too and it was yeah it was a fantastic day but again my throat's feeling a little bit sore and I am honestly shattered my brain power <laughs> is at a absolute low but that's okay I have worked myself hard I'm currently sitting on the sofa to be honest it is what is the time it it is five o'clock so I've been back for about it's only been an hour and a half Wow. So I've only been back for about an hour and a half, but I got back, got changed into some cozy clothes and I've got goggle box on in the background, just a little bit, like it's funny. And I think it's not great to get back from your nine to five and put the TV on and grab a drink and just zonk out and distract yourself from your reality because realistically if you're not enjoying your work life then the only life that you actually get to live that's full of enthusiasm and joy and fully you is the time outside of work and if you're spending it trying to distract yourself from how exhausted you are from the day then when are you really living holidays because they don't come around all that often so watching Gogglebox in the background was a strategic move because honestly, if I want to have energy later on this evening to prep for tomorrow and do some other work and start brainstorming ideas for the book, then I need to give my brain a rest and my voice, to be honest. So I've got it on the background. I've got a pad of paper here. So any thoughts I have that come up whilst I'm watching or I just start thinking, because Gogglebox, if you miss something, you haven't missed anything <laughs> if you zone out you haven't missed anything you just watch again and and it's funny and you can catch on but i've got a pad of paper in case any thoughts about the book come to me i've got my journal in case i want to write and i'm just gonna chill out for about an hour until it's time for dinner make some dinner and then prep for tomorrow and maybe do some purposeful work anyway i'm going to get back to relaxing and i'll probably the final day it is day three which means that i've just spent the last half an hour tidying up washing up packing all the bags and there are a lot of bags <laughs> when you're trying to entertain really young kids you need a lot of props but today we're going to make some real change again if you've watched the last vlog that i did where i came and did this with another school i told you all about what goes into the three days and the third day is when they make some real decisions about what they're going to change in their life so i'm very 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 excited got about half an hour before i need to head off so i'm going to go and start packing up the car and then once that's all done i can come back and get ready get motivated get pumped get my body and my mind in the right state for what we're about to do today so i'll see you there I'm at the school, we're all set up, 180 kids for the final time at Holy Trinity Primary School, super excited, we've got about half an hour to go and a minute I'm just putting on the most motivating music, the most high vibe music and moving my body because the only way that I can motivate and inspire these kids is if I am inspiring myself and I feel motivated myself. And the best way to do that is to move your body, get your body and your mind into state. Now today, there's gonna to be a lot of sitting down for them. We don't have getting up and moving around. So I think what I'm gonna do is halfway through the session, I'm gonna play a upbeat song and get them to do a little dance. So uh, yeah, that'll be fun. Might be looking outside the plane window, 
seeing what's going on. But this person is an air. We are on to the final session of day three. It has been incredible here at Holy Trinity and the highlight of today was getting a 50 person hug at the same time from 50 kids in year four. That was pretty spectacular. So yeah, definitely some memories I will not be forgetting in a while. And that is a wrap. Chairs are away. Kids are heading back to their classroom and I'm gonna start heading the three and a half hours home. It has been brilliant, but I'm very ready for a little rest. I spent some time speaking to the deputy head, chatting through the plans for them to do now and to do before I come back in a few months time to see how they've been getting on. So it has been an absolute pleasure and I'm leaving with a big smile on my face and a sore jaw from smiling so much, but I'm also very excited to get home. So we're gonna get home and then I think we're putting our new bed up, which is exciting. So we'll see you next time. Yeah.